left off with osmoregulation in your freshwater and marine TBOST fishes. Just remember that there are going to be different challenges facing these different types of fish, and that's all dependent on um, the dissolved solute concentration on the inside of the fish's body versus on the outside. So a freshwater fish is going to have a lot more concentrated um, ions within its body than there are outside in the freshwater environment. And it's the opposite with a marine fish. The dissolved ion concentrations are going to be relatively um, lesser on the inside of this fish than they are um, in that very salty seawater. With plant cells, it's a little bit of a different story. Um, they face different challenges. Plants have rigid cell walls, which animal cells do not have. Animal cells just have that plasma membrane. And they're really at the mercy of their environment. So plants, of course, can't just get up and walk away <laughs> when conditions are not very favorable. So their cells are going to be prone to wilting. So unlike an animal cell in an isotonic environment, a plant cell in an isotonic environment is going to wilt. There needs to be basically a constant intake of water in order for those plant cells to remain rigid. Okay, moving gears here, switching gears here a little bit um, to the concept of active transport. Remember, if it's an active form of transport, it's going to require energy. If it's passive transport, there's no energy required and it just happens naturally. So active transport needs energy in order to move molecules across a membrane. And when we're talking about a membrane, of course, we're usually talking about the membrane of a cell, which is made up of that phospholipid bilayer. Cells will often have these transport proteins that help to move large solutes either inside the cell or out of the cell. So a transport protein is going to have to use energy from ATP in order to pump a solute against its concentration gradient. So if, um, if within the cell there is a higher solute concentration, it's going to um, it's going to require that that transport protein uses energy to keep moving that same type of solute into the cell because naturally that solute is going to want to move outside of the cell. It's going to want to move down its concentration down its concentration gradient. Excuse me. Um, so in order to get more of that solute in the cell, that transport protein is going to require energy. Exocytosis and endocytosis have to do with traffic of large molecules. Large molecules can include proteins that are too big to enter or exit a cell without assistance. So a cell is actually going to package these large molecules up in little vesicles, these um, transport vesicles here. And another example of this is our tear glands. We use the process of exocytosis to export tears when we cry. So when we're talking about exocytosis, that just means um, when molecules are exiting the cell. When we're talking about endocytosis, that means that molecules are going to be entering the cell. We also have um, cell membranes participating in various types of cell signaling. So signals are going to be coming either from the external environment or from other cells, and those signals are going to be conveyed by membrane proteins. So this depiction here, everything within this area is going to be inside the cell. Everything out here is outside of the cell, and we have this purple receptor protein here that is going to bind with epinephrine, which is adrenaline, from our adrenal glands. The 
this receptor protein, when it binds with that adrenaline, is going to cause a transduction pathway. So proteins are going to be basically in this relay that um, get that signal to where it needs to be inside the cell. So we have various different proteins that are helping get this signal from adrenaline inside the cell. So some biological reaction is going to occur. occur. This is going to be a response. Um, in this example, it's going to be hydrolysis of glycogen releases glucose for energy. Because, of course, we all know that adrenaline often occurs in times of intense exercise or stress, and in those situations we're going to need a release of energy as soon as possible. So these various proteins help conduct that signal in order for us to respond appropriately. Okay, so membranes are an interesting topic just because they are so integral to every type of cell. All cells have a plasma membrane, and what's interesting about phospholipids, which form up that membrane, is that they self-organize. They self-organize into bilayers when combined with water and shaken, forming water-filled bubbles of membrane. So remember, you think about the inherent properties of that phospholipid bilayer. The lipids in that phospholipid bilayer do not want to associate with water, so they are going to want to be on either side of the phospho, um, phosphate group, which forms the head, um, which are water-loving molecules. So even when they're not actually making up a cell, just the phospholipids themselves actually self-organize, which is really interesting and has to do with the inherent properties of the chemicals that make up those phospholipids. And because of these um, chemical properties, it's thought that phospholipids were among the first organic compounds that formed from chemical reactions on the early Earth. And an example of this here is one of these water-filled bubbles that's actually made up of phospholipids. So if you just have phospholipids that aren't even part of a living cell, they're still going to self-organize into these water-filled bubbles. And because of this, scientists think that they are one of the first um, organic molecules that formed on early Earth. We're going to talk a lot more about um, the evolution of life and organic molecules forming from non-organic molecules um, when we get into chapter 15. So that's a really interesting chapter, and I look forward to talking more about that when we get there. But for now, we're going to move on with these early chapters, and we're going to talk more about cellular respiration as well as photosynthesis. Thank you for listening, and if you have any questions, as always, feel free to email me.